Okay, so right now I am hooked up to this electrical surgical generator. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna run electricity through my body and turn this light bulb on. Let's see how it goes. So I'm gonna be very careful. Well, maybe I already I've kind of forfeited that idea of being careful because I'm hooked up to an electrical surgical generator, but you wanna be very careful if you were to try this. Just don't try this actually. So what I need to do is make sure that I am in good contact with this light bulb and you'll see so I'm able to light that up. Now I'm not hurt or anything like that, but electricity is passing through my body. Now you may want to know how I'm able to do this safely. And well, I wouldn't say it's exactly safe, but I'm able to do this safely because I'm keeping the current density through my skin low. In order to show you the effects of current density, what I'm going to do is apply this electrode over a large surface area. So I'm going to push down on the flat end of the electrode and use the cut function. And you can see that very little has happened to the orange. Now, if I apply a, if I increase the current density by just using the tip of this electrode, let's see what happens. Right, so you can see I'm now cutting right there. So just by changing the amount of contact area, I'm able to change the current density that's occurring, which is able to change or influence what's happening at the surface there. All right, let's take a look at the circuit. When I had the light bulb hooked up to my body and then I ran electricity through my body, power the light bulb. Now what's really going on? Well, let's take it one step at a time. Remember this is AC, so let's look at one part of the AC signal, right? That's gonna come out through the monopolar port. Current is gonna travel along the lead to the pencil into the electrode through the conductive part of the light bulb. Then it's gonna go through the filament, power that up. Then it's gonna go into the other conductive part of the light bulb through my hand into the return electrode. And then it's gonna go back into the return port of the ESU completing the circuit. Now what's gonna happen is because this is AC, the direction of current is gonna flip. Current is going this direction. At some point, it's going to flip and go in the opposite direction, but the path stays the same. Now most ESUs will have a frequency of around 500 kilohertz. All right, so it's switching extremely fast. So really both the electrode here and the return electrode can be thought of as active. Now the thing is the electrode, right, is able to concentrate the current in a very specific area, whereas the return electrode is dispersing that current throughout the body. So there's not any danger or there's, if it's used properly, there's not any danger of getting burns. All right, in this situation, what I have is I actually have the electrode placed deep within this orange right here. What I'm gonna be able to show you is that by using this plate and having a high current density with the plate, I can also make a cut into the orange. Of course, I have to activate the pencil to do it. Right, so there you can see what I'm doing is I'm concentrating the current using a very small contact area of the plate and I get that high current density. Obviously, if I use a large current or a large contact area like this and I hit cut, right, I don't see anything. And as you can see, nothing happens because I have that larger contact area. Okay, now let's go back and take a look at our ESU circuit in waveform. Now, if we have a signal at 500 kilohertz per second, what does that mean? So effectively, what this is telling us is that 500,000 times a second, this signal is switching back and forth. So it's pretty fast. Now, when you're setting up your ESU, the primary thing that you're gonna control is the power, right? So you can control the power on the ESU generator. Now, you may ask yourself, well, what is the voltage that's coming out of the generator? And that's gonna depend on what kind of mode you're running it in. So if you're running the ESU in cut mode, right, 
and depending on the resistance of the body resistance of the person where the electrode and the pencil are, or the electrode are put, it affects how the ESU is going to regulate the voltage, right? So the ESU is trying to output a specific power and it has to modify the voltage to try to get to that power depending on the resistance that's being experienced or the impedance that's being experienced. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you can expect around 800 volts as a pure cut. So around approximately 800 volts for a pure cut mode. So in monopolar mode, you have two options. You can do either cut or coag. So cut is going to be shown at two different levels. Right now we're doing a cut at 50 watts, and now you're going to see a cut at 100 watts. And what you're going to see is that the cut at 100 watts is obviously going to have a larger impact on the tissue. It's going to have more destructive destruction of the tissue because it's heating the tissue up more. It's, you're increasing the current that's going through the meat. And that obviously has an impact on the tissue effects. You can also change tissue effects by using a different mode, such as the cut mode. All right, so when we have our two different modes, right, we have been talking so far about cut, and with cut, the generator is on 100% of the time. And I mentioned before, an average value might be around 800 volts for a cut. Obviously, it depends on the power, depends on the body's internal resistance. But what about coag? All right, so with coag, right, the the cut signal is constantly on, it's constantly going back and forth at 500 kilohertz. But with the coag function, the generator is only on 6%, right? So it does a little 6% on, and then it's off the rest of the time. Then 6% on, off. So what happens in that case? Well, in order to keep the same power, let's say you had 100 watts on cut and 100 watts on coag, well, you have to ramp the voltage way up in order to get the same amount of power. So with coag, the voltage is much higher, usually in the thousands of volts. And the, the effect of this, when it's functioning clinically is going on, is that it makes a lot more sound, you get a lot more action going on during coag. And so a lot of clinicians will think that's where like the best setting is because it's, it's getting a lot of popping and noise is going on because that voltage is really, really high. So you're getting a lot of vulgaration and desiccation. But the reality is for doing deeper cuts, and, and so with coag, a lot of stuff happens at the surface, but it's not as good at penetrating deep into tissue. That's why a cut is at 100% on and it's at a lower voltage. You want that for a deeper cut. But if you are trying to desiccate or fulg use fulguration, the coag works well because it has that higher voltage. So real quick, let's take a look at the difference between cut and coag on our orange. Here you can see cut going on at 100 watts. Next, we're gonna take a look at coag and you can see that there's a lot more surface effects with coag. So remember, it's the same waveform, but with coag, you only have the generator on for a limited period of time. Now, obviously you could do a blend, and a blend is where you go somewhere in between the cut and coag, where instead of doing just 6% on, you might do 10% on or 20% on, and that's where you get your blend function. All right, so some of the key things that influence an ESU, particularly how it affects the cutting and the coag of the patient, right? So that's the contact time, the amount of time you're holding the pencil or activating the ESU, the power setting itself, right? So how much power are you putting in at a, at a moment? The electrodes themselves, are you using a regular electrode or maybe a bipolar? What kind of mode are you in? The tissue impedance, right? That's the resistance of the tissue and also the distance between the electrodes. And that's pretty important. So if you understand, like you have the active electrode, we could think of that as the pencil in most cases, and you have the return electrode, think of that as the plate. So the distance in the human body and what tissue it has to go through is going to drastically impact the influence of the ESU on the person. So for instance, the farther away the plate is, the higher the resistance between the plate and the electrode, the active electrode. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna need more power to get the same functionality. Or if you have a high tissue, if you're cutting something that has high resistance, well, it's gonna be hard to build up current because of that high resistance, so you're gonna need more power. So those are just some of the main things that actually influence the functionality, the functionality 
of your ESU. So we've only just scratched the surface on ESUs and we're going to create some new videos on the return electrode specifically and other types of measurements for ESUs. Now make sure to check out our video on ESU generator output testing and we hope you enjoy the video.